All right, we're gonna look at the um, counting exercises. So we're gonna be using combinations, permutations, and the fundamental counting principle. So the first one here, we have a boy earning two pairs of pants, three shirts, eight ties, two jackets. Uh, how many different outfits can he make? So we're gonna use that uh, fundamental counting principle. So there are two ways to choose his pants, then three ways to choose shirts, eight ways to shirt, choose the ties, two ways to do the jacket. Now we could um, draw the factor or the, the little tree diagram here, um, but because we know that fundamental counting principle, we could just multiply these all together uh, to get our answer, which will be the 96 different outfits. So those are all the different combos we could get. For number two, we're looking at um, a three course meal that has an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. So again, fundamental counting principle, three ways to choose the first thing, eight ways to choose the next one, two ways to choose the dessert, that gets a total of 48 different meal combos we could get. For number three, we're looking at how many three letter words can be made using only the letters F, G, H, and I. Uh, now, we don't need to actually find out what those words are and it has words in quotes just because really it's just talking about rearranging those four letters. So again, I want to, I'm gonna put four little spots, or no, three little spots because it's a three letter word. And there are four ways to choose the first letter, four ways to choose the next one, and four ways to use the next one. So that's gonna get us a total of 64 different words. But that was if repetition was allowed. If repetition isn't allowed, if we use the F, for example, let's say there's four ways to choose that first letter of the word. Um, if we choose F, then there would be only three letters left, and then there'd be only two letters left. So that's gonna reduce our possibilities, and we'll have only 24 words for that one. For number four, very similar, except we're looking at four letter words, and we have six letters to choose from. Oops, I did one too many here. And so um, with repetition being allowed, we'll have six times six times six, which will be a total of 1,296 words. Um, and then as soon as the repetition is not allowed, these count down because you have one less possibility because you can't reuse it. Um, so that will be only 360 words if we do that. For number five, we're looking at license plate frames or license plates that have three letters, then three digits. So it doesn't say anything about repetition or that we can or can't start with a certain letter or number. So if there are three letters, there's 26, 26, 26 ways to choose each of those. And then the three digits, um, there are 10, 10, 10. Again, it doesn't say anything about repetition. I'm multiplying these all together really because of that fundamental counting principle. And so when we multiply that, we end up with 17,576,000. All right, I just brought in my calculator. I'm using a scientific calculator on Desmos. This is really the best online calculator that you can use. It will um, help us a lot, especially as we continue using more uh, formulas and things like that. Um, so for number six, we have a computer password that must be eight characters long. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, really eight. How many passwords are possible if only the 26 letters of the alphabet are allowed? So really there's 26, 26, 26. We can write that a little shorthand, 26 to the eighth power. And if we punch it in our calculator, I just wanted to show you that um, when we're in here, if we entered um, 26, to the, use the AB button, eight, we get that. Now it's kind of crazy when we look at that, it has um, a really big 10 to the 11th there, but really this just means we're multiplying by a power of 10. This is scientific notation. So if we're gonna multiply it by 10, well, 11 of them, if you multiply by 110, it moves the decimal place over to the right one, but we're gonna have to move it over 11 times. So. Through two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That ends up actually looking like two zero eight eight two seven zero six five, and then three more zeros. And so the number that we're actually talking about is quite big. It's two hundred eight billion eight hundred twenty seven million. And so this is what we should be writing down. Um, again, it's okay if we ended up. Um, writing it in scientific notation, but we want to make sense of what that number is. So I'll rewrite it on here. Again, I'm kind of using a very small amount of space right now. If you need to make better sense of it, please write it on a separate sheet of paper. Um, this is just kind of saving me from having to rewrite the questions. Um, but again, if you do write it on a separate paper, you would want to rewrite the questions as well because that's something that you're going to want to study off of.
Okay, for number seven, we have a pianist that's going to play four pieces at a recital. And how many ways can she arrange those? Um, I know that's going to be that four factorial because you're saying that there are four pieces that you're going to rearrange. So four ways to arrange the first piece, then three, two, one, um, which is going to be equal to 24 different ways. For number eight, we're looking at the different ways the first, second, and third can be awarded in a contest with 210 contestants. Um, so, I mean, the order's mattering here. We have a first, second, and third. We can do those placeholders and say there's 210 ways, then 209 ways, then 208 ways. We can also rewrite this as there's 210 we want to choose from, P for permutation, and 3 is what we want to select. And if you enter that in your calculator, well, let's take a look here. Um, we can actually go to the function um, piece and we're going to click on that NPR and then within the NPR we're going to write 210 comma oops 210 comma and the three we want to choose from and it calculates it for us. I mean it's the same if we were to enter the numbers 210 times so I mean it's not catching all my numbers here 210 times 209 times 208 and you can see it's getting me the same answer okay so just getting used to those different notations so I'm going to rewrite that over here that was 9129 120 all right we have seven Olympic sprinters eligible to compete in a four by one relay race for the U.S. Olympic team how many four person relay teams can be selected from the seven athletes so the order let's see four-person relay teams, we are going to select those four. And the order matters because you're going to have a uh, first leg, second leg, third leg, and fourth leg. So I would write, you can write the four-person spots if you want and say seven, six, five, four. Um, you could also say seven P4 if you want. And if I go back to my calculator, just so we can get used to using this, I'm going to push... Enter on that, and we're looking again at PNPR, and we're going to have 7, comma, 4, which will be 840 ways. All right, for number 10, we have a computer user is downloading 25 songs to use in an online file sharing program. They want to create a playlist with 10 songs. Um, so the order is important to them for this. So we're going to do 25P10. And if we enter that in our calculator, again, you can write it out if you want to. That one's a little bit longer, but you'd have to have 10 spots and then count down 25, 24, 23, 22, so on. So if I go over to my calculator here, I'm going to, again, go to hit the function. Oops, I was still on the same line. I'm going to hit function, NPR, and I want to choose from 25 songs. I want to choose 10, and the order matters to me, so that's why I have that. Again, this is written in that scientific notation. 10 to the 13th means that I'm going to take this decimal voice, multiply it by 10 13 times. So it's going to move to the right 13 times, um, which so far, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> it's quite large. I'm going to write it down over here. Um, it would be this huge number. And again, scientific notation is okay, but we need to make sense of it. And so just kind of seeing that that huge power of 10 means it's going to be a quite large number, as you can see there. All right. For number 11, it says in Western music, an octave is divided into 12 pitches. For the film Closing Counters of Their Kind, director Steven Silberg asked John Williams to write a five-note theme which aliens would use to communicate with people on Earth. Disregarding rhythm and octave changes, how many five-note themes are possible? So if we have these 12 different pitches, we're going to do 12 P5. Again, I head over. We'll look at putting in that 12 P5. So I go to my function, NPR, and I'm going to type in 12, comma, 5. And we can see it's 95,040. So now I'm going to come over here, 95,040. Okay, for number 12, we're looking at how many ways four pizza toppings can be chosen from 12. 
So we know we're choosing from 12, we want four. But now this one, thinking about pizza toppings, they're gonna just be scattered on the pizza. The order that we put them shouldn't really matter. So this is actually gonna be a combination. So remember what we said with that is, if we did a permutation 12P4, um, we want to divide by those that could repeat. Um, because for example, if I had, um, let's say pepperoni, sausage, jalapeno, and pineapple as my toppings, um, this would be counted as something different than if I put the pineapple on first, then pepperoni, then sausage, then jalapeno. Um, but I'm saying that those are really the same thing. Those are the four toppings. I don't really know which one went on first. And so we want to divide out the number of ways that those could happen. And so that's going to happen, you know, four times three times two times one, which is really four P4. And so when we do that, we're going to end up, let's go look at my calculator over here. We can enter it either way. So if I enter, um, let's see, function. So combination, we're going to do 12 comma four. We get 495, uh, which I just wanted to show you was the same thing as if I put, um, if I thought about it as a permutation first and then just divided by the repetition, which is four, oopsie, go back and put a permutation in there. And then we're talking about four P4 and we get that same answer. So I wanted to remind you those were the same. And that's a way to think about that combination. And we have 495. All right, moving on to the next page. We have at a baby shower, 17 guests are in attendance. Five of them are randomly selected to receive a door prize. Prizes are all identical. So that's the hint for you that the order that they are chosen doesn't matter. So we have 17 people and they are going to win a prize. So 17 C5. <clears throat> Again, you could think about it as a permutation, but just knowing that um, we want to see the number of ways that we can arrange those five that we choose and divide out by that because otherwise we have too many. Um, so this is going to be equal to, I'm going to scan over to my calculator really quick. I'm just trying to punch this in so you can see what I'm entering. And um, again, it's really nice to use the decimals calculator. Um, we have 17, so going to the function, and CR, going back to the mean, 17 comma 5. And we'll get 6,188. All right, for number 14, we have a lottery game. It's called a 650 lottery game, so six numbers from the numbers 1 to 50. Um, how many different choices, if the order doesn't matter. So we're gonna write in there 50, that's how many we have to choose from. We get to choose any six numbers. And if we enter that into the calculator, we're gonna get 15,890,700. We have another lottery game for number 15. We're picking three numbers this time from the numbers zero to nine. So there are 10 numbers to really choose from. Zero to nine, there's 10 digits. We wanna choose three. And that's going to be 120 different ways. For number 16, we have a jury that consists of a pool that consists of 27 people. Um, we want to choose 11 to serve in the jury and then one more to serve as the jury foreman. So if we choose from those 27, 11, and again, the order doesn't matter, then we're going to have to actually choose the jury foreman. So once 11 people have been selected, that leaves 27 minus 11, 16 people left to choose from for the foreman. And we're only gonna choose one of those. Um, some people might even just say there's 16 ways to choose that last part, which is equivalent. So if I enter 27 C11 times 16 or 16 C1, I'm gonna head over to my calculator so I could do that. We have 27, so I'm going to do my functions and CR. We're going to do 27, choose 11, so 27 comma 11 in this calculator. And then we're going to multiply that by um, 16, or you could say 16 C1, which is equivalent to 16. So wow, there's a lot of different ways that that could happen. I'm going to fill that in for my answer here. 
and again that was two hundred eight thousand six hundred six thousand three hundred twenty all right and one more here it says the United States Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation consists of 23 members. There's 12 Republicans, 11 Democrats. The Surface Transportation and Merchant Subcommittee, so a smaller committee, is made up of eight Republicans and seven Democrats. How many ways can members of the subcommittee be chosen? So we know two things are going to happen. We got to choose the Republican and we got to choose the Democrats. From the Republicans, there's 12 to choose from and we want eight Order doesn't matter because there's no like first, second, or third, or president, vice president. Just says we're choosing a, for the committee. Then for the Democrats, there's going to be 11, and we want to choose seven. We want both of these things to be happening. So we're looking at the number of ways the Republicans times the number of ways of the Democrat. And if you enter those both in your calculator, you should get 163,350.